Welcome to a detailed review of the 2021 printing of Galaxy Trucker, including a comparison to the original. First off, I want to start by thanking CGE for sending us a review copy of this new printing of Galaxy Trucker to check out. The Galaxy Trucker was designed by Vlada Shavadal and was originally published in 2007 by Czech Games Edition or CGE. Now, this new edition is still by Vlada with some rule tweaks and features one of the original artists, Thomas Kaverci. I apologize if I got that pronounced wrong. This was also published by CGE in 2021. Features a much lower MSRP of only $29.95 US. Now this edition of Galaxy Trucker plays two to four players with games taking under half an hour for a standard game. Now note the game also features a longer optional play mode called the Transgalactic Trek, which takes much longer as it's basically playing the game three times in a row. So while many people may already be familiar and looking for the differences, what is Galaxy Trucker for those not aware? In Galaxy Trucker, you are playing space truckers working for Corporation Incorporated, delivering much needed sanitary pipes across the stars. Over the years, Corp Inc. determined the cheapest way to do this was to have the truckers fly ships actually built out of sanitary pipes, the pipes they're meant to deliver. Now the game is played over three rounds, with the first round, players build ships out of tiles in real time, adding things like modular housing units, hot water heaters, engines, plasma drills, and power centers, and more, while following some strict but easy to learn placement rules. Next, everyone goes through pre launch where they collect crew, energy tokens, etc., to fill their ship. Once everyone has their ships built, they then go on a supply run where players encounter all kinds of interesting things like fun meteor showers, very welcoming pirates, abandoned perfectly safe space stations, totally uninhabited non-dangerous planets, and while there's that combat zone thing and a few other things you'll encounter along the way. Once at your destination, players are awarded credits, points, for things like the order you arrived, the delivery of cargo, and for having the most intact ship at the end of the journey. For a look at what you get in the box for this new edition of Galaxy Trucker, check out our unboxing video on YouTube. So this game comes with a fantastic rule book that is great for learning the game that is actually designed to read at the table the first time you play for playing through your learning game. Now the components here will be familiar for fans of the game, though everything's been tweaked just a bit. Uh, there's new center boards, there's three ship boards, plastic cargo cubes, a tweaked adventure card deck featuring new graphic design, and a ton of thick, well-cut cardboard ship tiles, notably more than in the original game. Now, one notable new component you'll recognize are title tiles. These are something I'll be getting into in a bit. So not a huge change, but a general upgrade then. Now, one of the new things that's included in this edition of Galaxy Trucker is a four-page quick reference guide that I think is a fantastic addition to the box. This includes a full rule summary as well as describing every tile type and how the adventure cards works. This is the most welcome edition, in my opinion. Overall component quality is fantastic. Though I will say I wish the energy cubes were a little bigger. They are the same as in the original game. They're a little tiny. We like to call them Tic Tacs. They tend to roll a little bit. I just wish they were a little larger. They are the, the most fiddly component in the game. Okay, so we've got the box open and checked everything out. How about you walk us through an overview of play for Galaxy Trucker? Okay, so first off, this is going to be very much an overview. There's a lot of different tiles in Galaxy Truck and a lot of different cards, and I am not going to take the time to describe every little bit. Now, one of the biggest changes you're going to notice right away is the default way to play the game has changed. After finishing the learning flight, the tutorial flight, each time you sit down to play Galaxy Trucker, you're going to choose what level you want to play, one, two, or three. Now, is that a difficulty level then, or is it length of play? Yes, it's difficulty and length, because with the three different levels, you have different ship sizes, you have different adventure cards you're going to use, and also the number of adventure cards. So your actual length of your journey, how many encounters you have, is going to change. So one is a simpler, quicker game, and three is the more complicated, longer game. So once you pick your difficulty level, you're going to grab a ship board of the appropriate level. The appropriate main board is placed where everyone can see it. 
you make adventure card decks, you're going to make four separate decks, you're going to build those and place them by the main board. Notably, one goes above the board while the rest go underneath. That'll matter in a minute. Ship tokens, starting crew cabins are placed, and all the ship tiles are shuffled face down on the center of the table. Then we start the building phase, first phase of the game. Now, in real time, players are going to draw tiles and add them to their ships following very specific building rules, like having to match the connectors on the edge of the tiles. Players also have the option to save tiles to place later, but they get a penalty if they don't use those up by the end of the building phase. Note when you're drafting, any unwanted tiles can be placed back on the table, but they go face up where other people can then snatch them up. Now, the different tile types include pipes, lasers, thrusters, cargo holds, hazmat cargo holds, batteries, shields, crew cabins, and alien life support systems. Each of these components is going to hopefully give you some advantage when you're trying to complete your flight in the final phase of the game. Just as a quick example, lasers are used to fight off pirates, crew cabins let you have more crew for salvage missions, and shields, which require batteries, but they can protect your ship from meteors and so on. So you're getting your truck ready for the big haul later on then. Yes. Now, while shipbuilding, you can also peek at the adventure cards that are below the main player board, which means you can look at three of the decks, but not the four. So you get some heads up on what you can expect to see on your run, and this can be very useful in guiding how you build your ship. It's hard to build the right truck if you don't know what you'll be hauling, and while you could look at all the cards, you'd waste time and everyone else would finish building well before you. Yeah, that's something very dependent on who you play this game with. Some people are meticulous and slow and don't want to touch the timer, and other people flip it at the first chance, which gets into the fact that this game is played in real time. At any point during this phase, any player can flip the timer over for the first time. Then when it runs out, anyone can flip it again. On each board, the timer can only be flipped to the last spot that's marked with an S for start by a player who's finished building. So that's one of the things where you technically can take as long as you want, but once someone finishes, they're going to flip that timer over and it has one more time to run out. And once it ends, everyone must stop building. Now, the orders players complete their ships in also determines your starting position on the main board, which is just a circular track that shows the relative position of the players in relation to each other. Round and round we go. Now, once all players have finished building their ships, you go through what's called the pre-launch stage. This is a stage where you're going to make sure everyone's ship is legal. You're going to collect various tokens to place on your ship. Things like the batteries get energy tokens, crew cabins get astronauts, and potentially aliens if you have a life support system attached. Now, aliens are cool because aliens actually replace two astronauts, which is kind of bad because you have less crew. But each alien either gives you a bonus to your lasers or your thrusters for the common flight. No point in going out on a mission if you can't have crew and fuel, after all. Finally, we get to the flight. All the adventure card piles, all four of them, are shuffled together. The player in the lead on the position track flips over the top card, and everyone encounters that card. That continues card after card until the deck runs out. Now, adventure cards you face include planets, which you can land on to collect cargo, open space, where you get to crank up your engines and improve your position on the track, Meteors, which can badly damage your ship, and enemies like pirates and slavers, abandoned ships and stations, and of course the dreaded combat zone, and more. So life in space, adventures, hazards, riches, and loss, the parts we actually wanted to see in the Han Solo movie. <laughs> so during, during many encounters, your ship's going to be at risk, right? This is usually in the form of meteors or enemy laser fire. When this happens, you find out what direction the attack is coming from from the card. It'll show like small meteors from your right or a blaster shot from the rear. You're then going to roll 2d6 and look on your player board to determine which section of your ship would be hit by this attack. Now, different attack types can be stopped in different ways. Small meteors bounce off your ship unless it happens to have an open component showing at that spot. Large meteors, though, have to be shot down by lasers. Now, laser fire can only be blocked by shields. And big lasers, which thankfully there aren't many of, can't be blocked by anything, including shields. You're just going to lose a piece. Now, when a component is hit, it has to be removed from your ship. In addition, though, you now have to make sure that everything else is still connected to your ship. And if it's not, that whole section is going to be lost as well. And that can lead to quite the chain reaction. Lose a wing and suddenly half your flight systems and storage are lost. Too bad, so sad. All part of the game. 
Now, things like planets, abandoned ships, and stations can be investigated. Now, doing so could cost you crew and always cost you time, moving you back on that position track. Now, the rewards are usually worth it as long as you can afford the cost, with most wards, rewards being cargo cubes or credits. Now, cargo cubes must be stored in cargo holds that you built onto your ship, and hazmat storage is only able to hold, or sorry, hazmat goods can only be held in hazmat storage, though technically hazmat storage can be hold any good. Now, I'll leave the rest of the adventure cards and the components for you to discover on your own. All right. Well, time to uh, go for discover the mysteries of the cosmos on your own space truck. Now, once you get to the end of the adventure deck for this flight, the flight's over. You've gotten to your destination. You are then awarded credits, money, and points, both being the same, interchangeable in this game. Players get points for their final position. First, of course, scoring more than fourth. Selling cargo cubes with different cargo cubes being worth different amounts of money with the hazmat ones, of course, being worth the most. And the prettiest ship gets award. That's the one with the least open connectors at the end of the run. Finally, players lose one point for each damaged component in the storage area of the board. Either stuff left over from when they were building their ship they failed to place or stuff that got destroyed on their journey. Now note, unlike the original printing of the game, there's no limit to how high this penalty can be. After taking that penalty, player with the most credits wins. Sell stuff and don't have gaping holes in your ship. Got it. Now what I just described is the default way of playing Galaxy Trucker now. Now this method of play is fast, furious, and highly random. Build the ship, go on a run, get points, done, game's over. Now the rules do present another way to play, which they call the transgalactic trek. This method of play takes much longer and adds a brand new element to the game that did not exist in the original of titles. When playing a transgalactic trek, you start off by selecting a number of title tiles based on the number of players. Each title lists a goal for the players to try to accomplish during their run. For example, the freight hauler will be awarded to the player who has the most individual cargo hold tiles with at least one cube in it at the end of the run. Another example is the master engineer who is awarded points to the players who is awarded, sorry, to the player whose ship has the most components still left in it at the end of the run. Now there are a total of six different titles, and you are going to use at most four per game. So basically just achievement goals for both for bonus DP, like most people are used to in games. Yep, pretty much. Though there is some interesting stuff they did with these titles once you've earned them. So once you know what titles are up for grabs, you're then going to play a level one game. In full, including all the rules I already described, though instead of getting points for the most beautiful ship, you're going to hand out those titles. So you're going to look at each title and give the title to the player who earned it. Now, it is possible for a player to earn more than one of these here, and each one's going to give the player two credits at the end of the first run. Interesting, once points are handed out, no one's allowed to have more than one title. So they then donate that title to a player who didn't earn one. So at the end of round one, every player will have one title, which they place face up in front of them. Bragging rights, except for the people who had to get theirs handed to them. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a t-ball game where everyone gets a trophy. There's, there's, there's some socialism going on here. Now at level two, you then play another run. Same deal. Only difference from the core game is that each player should be building in order to defend their title, whatever title's in front of them. Is at the end of the run, if a player qualifies for the title in front of them, they earn four bonus credits this time. Then they get to flip the title over to its other side, which is the gold side. Now, no, these are not redistributed. These titles aren't redistributed. You are stuck with the one you earned in the first round. So you're defending your title as opposed to getting something new. And if you don't have whatever that title states, you get nothing. So it's the same achievements all over again in round two. So yes. if you got the, the most haul or whatever, you have to do that same thing again in round yes. two. That's correct. Now, the gold sides of the tiles include even more difficult challenges. So sticking to the two examples I gave before, the freight hauler now has a rule that if they place two cargo holds next to each other, neither can actually hold cargo. Yet they still are trying to be the person with the most cargo holds with cargo in. And the master engineer has to start the game by putting two tiles in reserve. Then after everyone else is done building, they have to show off their awesome thing by placing those two tiles in the holes in their ship. And if they can't, they get penalized. So since they're only a, a couple or four points, it seems like not getting the bonus after second round isn't the end of the world. Is it recoverable if you, you miss it and don't flip over to gold? 
I think it is, but in the final round of the game, again, you do a level three run. So you now moved up to the biggest ship, the longest run. At the end, you again check to see if you defended your titles. A defended silver title is now worth six. That is a significant amount of points, whereas a defended gold is worth 12. The thing is, those gold restrictions are hard. So I don't know. Again, it very much this game very much depends on who you're playing with and how quick they're building. If you're playing with some nice slow players that give you time to perfectly plan out your ship, you might be a little more worth trying to go for the gold. But if you're with players who just can't wait to get their ship built and want to go with a half-built ship just to make everyone else panic, those golds may be unreachable. Now, one of the things in this version of play, which I think should be obvious, but in case it isn't, is that your credits actually carry over for each of them of three rounds. So you complete round one, you keep your points. And then in the next round, you keep your points. And the next round, you keep your points. What's kind of devastated in this version of the game is there's no maximum penalty for lost components. So you can actually lose the points you made in one round if you do really terrible in the next. Ouch. So there's quite a few small but significant changes here, it seems. What is it you thought of this new edition of Galaxy Trucker, and how does it compare to that original from 2007? Okay, so I have been a fan of Galaxy Trucker pretty much since it was first printed. Again, 2007, I actually think I got my copy in 2008. That fact hasn't changed. I still dig Galaxy Trucker. Galaxy Trucker is one of my favorite games. I'm happy to have it in my collection. The 2021 printing of Galaxy Trucker does nothing to take away from my joy in playing this game. Now, the most noticeable change everyone's going to see right away is the new box size, the new box art, and the new price point. And I've got to say, I can't help but be happy with this. It makes a game I love more accessible to a wider range of gamers, and honestly, it gives me a better way to put it on my shelf because smaller box is better when you run out of space. Certainly a bonus to have more people to play with for you and CGE. Very true. Now, another noticeable change that doesn't affect the gameplay is the new artwork and graphic design. Everything basically got a new coat of paint. And I will say overall, this is for the best. Even the various tokens have been upgraded. So the cargo cubes are now clear plastic and look a little cooler, whereas they were wooden cubes before. Uh, the higher quality astronauts and aliens, just everything's just polished up and a little bit nicer. And I noticed the uh, the box cover we've got up here uh, really pops more and stands out compared to the original. Yeah, I agree. And all of the art kind of has that, that more poppy, a little higher contrast, a little brighter colors. Now, one of the most significant design changes is the addition of the two-sided main boards. So instead of one main board that sits in the middle of the table, never changes, and you put a tile over it for what era you're playing, this actually changes depending on what round you're playing. There's different amount of spots for the hourglass. The actual track is different for how many spots are on it. Where players start in relation to each other, depending on where they finished, also changes. Now, part of that's pretty big, right? Because in the old game, when you finished building your ship, you had, a, I don't know what you call those games, but one of those games where you had to grab a tile before anyone else is, they remove that. When you're done, you say you're done, you pick up your ship, you put it on spot one. And the next player says, picks up the ship and puts it on part two. I really dig that. That is a very welcome change for me. Yeah, mad grabs are rarely an elegant mechanic. Now, the shipboards themselves have been redesigned. What's really impressive is they're significantly smaller while still giving you a full-size grid, like the same size grid. The actual squares you're putting your tiles on, size has not changed. Now, as for the ships themselves, the level one and three ships are identical to the original. No change at all in number of tiles or where they go. The level two ship, though, is actually two squares smaller, and there's no level three B ship. That was the one that kind of looked like the Enterprise that was in the original game that you actually put horizontally instead of vertically. Or sorry, vertically instead of horizontally. That does not exist at all. Now, while I admit I liked having four ships versus three, like that's just, I get more content. I have another ship I can build. I do understand that removing this option is part of what kept the price point down because now you don't need a separate player board for that other ship. Now, the nice part though, is due to the fact the grids are the same size, I don't see a reason you couldn't use the original ships or any of the expansion ships or any of the ones people have put out as downloadable content with this as an expansion. So mixing and matching between sets is workable for those who choose to and happen to have access to all that content. Exactly. Now, another change with the ships I already mentioned is that there's no longer a maximum penalty for destroyed parts. And as I've said, this, excuse me, as I've said, this is a significant change that encourages players 
to build better ships, which is a nice offset to some other difficulty tweaks in the game. These difficulty changes come in the form of the composition of the adventure cards. While the cards are almost a one-to-one -one match from the original, with exactly the same distribution of cards, there's just as many meteors, just as many pirates, just as many planets. There are some very small tweaks that it took me having to put them side by side to notice. Now, in particular, one planet now gives better quality resources, and almost all the meteor cards have been modified in both the number of meteors, the size of the meteors, and which direction they come from. Overall, in this new printing, there are less meteors than the original edition. Now, this does have the effect of making this new edition feel slightly easier than usual, the original with ships finishing runs more intact than I'm used to. So it was noticeable enough of a change for you to pick up on. I mean, you, you pointed that out yeah. the first time you played. Um, do you think most people would notice that? Honestly, it depends how much you played Galaxy Trucker and how good you were at it. Because when you play Galaxy Trucker the first time, you just build the ship, and you've got open connectors all over the place. You very quickly learn that outside open connectors on the outside of your ship are terrible because small meteors only take out an open tile. So one of the first things you're gonna to learn to do is make sure your outside edges are all safe. Then you're gonna learn things like, you know what, it's 2D6 and the number seven's what's gonna get hit most often. And I wanna make my valuable stuff out at the threes and fours, or, or sorry, the threes and whatever, eights or whatever's on the far end, I guess it'd be the nines. Threes and nines would be the opposite ends. Once you know stuff like that, even the original game gets easier. And it's like, I'm going through more successful because the small meteors don't matter to me. Well, this is even more true because for one, if you're playing with experienced players, you know this, plus there are now less meteors as well so that when stuff does get destroyed, there's less chance stuff's going to get blown up. But I don't know. I, like, I think you have to have played Galaxy Trucker enough to have gotten to the point where you no longer just place every tile you draft on your ship somewhere because you're trying to build the ship as quick as possible. If you've reached any level of expertise, I have a feeling you might notice it. The thing is, though, you don't use every card every game. It is just as likely as in the original game, you face no meteors at all. It can still happen. But when you do face meteors, they may be a little easier. Fair enough. So the most significant change here is the whole basic way to play the game. Uh, you can really see this if you look at the two board game geek listings and look at things like the playtime. I mean, the basic way to play now is pick a level, build ships, fly through, score done. It's weird to me. Like, that was the learning game in the original. To me, it's always been about completing multiple runs in a row. Now, what they've done is they took what, to me, was a medium-weight real-time Euro and made it into a quick tile-based shipbuilding game that could actually be a filler. That first learning run, we were able to finish in 10 minutes the first time, depending on how quick people build ships. This, in a way, though, is good because it makes the game even easier to learn than the original, especially with that super simple quick tutorial. Now, I think this is fantastic for new players and makes Galaxy Trucker more of a family game, a family weight game, making it approachable to more people. But this could be a big disappointment for long-term fans, but they thought of this. They also gave you the transgalactic trek mode of play. A little something for everyone. Now, this transgalactic track basically matches the old way to play the game with the new title rules. And I got to say, I like the title rules a lot. This adds a new level of depth and strategy to the existing game. Having the tiles face up at the start has the bonus of giving players direction and adds a new level of player interaction because the titles are based on having the most of something. So how you build your ship will potentially impact the score of other players. Previously in Galaxy Trucker, there was no way to chase the point leader. Now, if I see someone flip over their gold and they're trying to get the most crew, I can build my ships to make sure I have the most crew just to deny them. That was an aspect that didn't even exist in the original game. Right. Nothing like uh, hate drafting to build friendships. Yes. <laughs> now, overall, these changes in the 2021 edition of Galaxy Trucker combined to do a couple of things. The first of the game is now more accessible to a wider range of gamers due to its lower price point, easier learning curve, and shorter game time. Second, this edition of Galaxy Trucker is also designed for long-term fans, and the new transgalactic trek mode of play adds depth, direction, and more player interaction than even the original had. A more accessible game that also features more depth with optional rules? How can I complain about that? 
especially at a lower price point. So if building a spaceship out of tiles in real time, then watching that ship traverse dangerous space and hopefully arriving at its destination somewhat intact sounds fun to you and you don't already own Galaxy Trucker, go pick up this new edition. Mm -hmm. This version of the game is just as much fun as the original while being easier to learn and playable in a shorter time frame. Now, if you happen to be like my wife and can't stand real-time games and hate playing games where there's a timer looming over your head, Galaxy Trucker is probably not going to be the game for you. Also, if you don't like games where you build something only to watch it blow up, you're also going to want to stay away from this one. This is all about watching to see what happens and finding joy in both success and failure. I have to admit, it's the first round that somewhat puts me off the game, that real-time portion. Yeah, the real-time portion, that is something that you can, obviously, if you really want to, just ignore. And again, it's so player-dependent. It depends if someone flips that timer. You can literally play, and no one flips the timer until everyone's built. The timer is kind of an optional rule, but every time I play, there's always some jerk at the table that flips it over. <clears throat> That'd be me. Now, for those of you who already own Galaxy Trucker, I, I honestly don't know what to tell you. I, I'm going to leave the final decision to you. I, I have no definitive answer for this. I'm not sure if it's worth it for you. Now, I got to say, for that low price point, like that's it's like one third the cost of a regular game nowadays. And the fact that technically everything here can be combined with everything else, not just the core game, but like the big expansion, another big expansion, the anniversary event, and all the fan created content, it could totally be worth picking up this update. While I dig the new rule changes, you could also just pick this up and continue to play the game as you have for years. Play a three trip thing without titles. That's personally fine. But I gotta say, I really like the title rules. So what I would probably do is I, I like having that bit of direction at the start of each build. So if anything, I would be more likely to grab those and use them with the various different ship builds in the old game and throw those in as well. There you go. A solid reprint of a solid game. Totally agree. Now, what I plan on doing right now is keeping both copies. And they're going to serve two different purposes. This new edition is going to be my public play copy of Galaxy Trucker, where I bring it out to public events where I don't know who's going to be showing up and use it to introduce this great game to new players. But when playing at home and sitting down with experienced Galaxy Trucker players, I'm probably going to bring out the original game along with some of the big box expansions I've collected over the years. And I'm going to sit down and play a traditional game, but I am pretty sure I will be using the full Trek rules from the 2021 printing of Galaxy Trucker, including those title ties. Fair enough. Well, that's it for our review of Galaxy Trucker, the new 2021 edition. Let us know what you thought about this real-time sci-fi shipbuilding game in the comments, and also feel free to check out the more detailed review, written review, over at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com.